From the dog days of summer to the harsh winds of the winter, cross-country championships are earned over time through a level of dedication that is unmatched. I don't think there is any sport out there that requires so much physical effort and discipline as cross-country does. The hours and the training and the dedication and getting enough sleep and all the commitment that it takes to be an outstanding cross-country runner is just really so impressive. Well, to me, cross-country is about the team. It's the part of what we do where you're racing for more than just yourself. It's true that track and field is, is indeed my, um, like a team sport. Uh, and I believe in that, but then there's something about cross country and something about track of like, you're like standing on the line with your teammates, the exact same race, exact same time, exact same conditions and everything like that. And just like, we've been working hard together and here we are like. Cross country is unlike any other sport I've ever played. It's just something that requires not only so much physical strength and endurance to, in order to get through the races and workouts and long runs, but it's so mentally tough as well. I would say cross country is honestly like 60%, 60% mentally and 40% fitness. Because in the middle of a 10K, if you are not mentally strong, like there's nothing you can do because like, I know that my rivals are like mentally strong, so I know I need to be like stronger than them. A lot of times, especially with running on the track, super individualized you you end up thinking a lot about your time and how you're doing but uh, what's really special about cross country is your teammates really matter uh, on how you do as well um, so it's a really like close-knit environment I myself never had brothers so I think it's just that that when I'm like stand I'm training with people I'm living with people and I'm racing with them at the same time it's kind of like it's like a brotherhood sort of it's like it's a family and like God, I'm like going like through ups and downs with them and I love the weather, even though like it's cold and rainy, but I love to run in those conditions, especially like last in Seabolais were like cold and rainy. But in the middle of the race when I was like just passing people and I was like just you know like running over the mud and I was feeling good, I was feeling smooth, that was the best feeling ever so. And while the love of the sport can keep you smiling, the pursuit of greatness can keep you spinning your wheels. 2019 Rebels hit the road with the destination set on adding one more to the trophy case. Alongside a women's team continuing to turn the corner from a conference surprise to a national contender, the defending SEC champion men's team enters the final season of the decade with nothing to hold them back from an encore performance. I mean, there was definitely a lot of pressure. I think the first time we did it, it was a big surprise, like nobody really expected us to. But uh, looking at the team this year, we were expected to be the SEC champion. So, you know, with that does come a lot of pressure, you know, expectations. But just like last year, it doesn't matter who we run, when we come, we come to run. I think any time that you return all of the people that you ran at Nationals the season before, it's really exciting and you're able to set bigger goals for yourself. There's a lot of work ahead of us, but we're pretty ready for the season. Wasting no time in achieving success, the women's squad would capture the Commodore Classic behind five top 25 finishers and outpacing the next closest team by more than a half of a minute. You can't do it alone. That's why cross country is also so amazing as well is you have a really good team aspect. You're not running alone. You have 12 other girls running with you and everyone's counting on you and you're counting on them. So it's a really nice symbiotic relationship. Yeah, it was good. It was a really good, um, just really good rest buster, I think. We did really well in hoping we get a win out of that. Um, but I just think it was, it was a tougher course than we thought, but I think it was a really good opener and um, I'm excited for the team. I was fine until I got there and then I just, ugh, it really got me, but made it to the finish, so. Love, love, love how we fought the last mile. I mean, we had, everybody that scored for us was moving up, passing two or three people in the last stretch. To be honest, that's why we won the meet. We won by 15 or 16 points, but with every person got two or three people. So really, really, really good team effort and just great to see across the board. After a strong first meet in Nashville, the red and blue would head to the golden campus of Notre Dame, where a collection of the nation's best programs awaited the Rebels. And with only a handful of opportunities to prove yourselves in a short season, the men's team would be at full strength for the first time. We work harder, 
we got a lot of talent. We know Van Horn is always right to this day. Everything's right, and crap. You shouldn't be doubting yourselves. All right, just be smart. Let's make sure we're where we want to be in the race at the moment. Jeez. Okay, but don't overcommit too early. You have a lot of time to still move up. Let's work together. Let's do it. Let's go, boys. Say we prove it, boys. Let's prove it. Good. Ribs on three. One, two, three. What was really cool about Notre Dame, that was the opening race for a lot of the guys that uh, would continue on later in the season. This is going to be it. This is where you like you start training and you start like working hard in order for the better, like for the better reward at the end of the season. And it is NCAAs and that's where everybody's goals are and everybody's focused toward that exact direction. What ended up being really special about that race is um, pretty much everyone walked away knowing that there was a whole lot of potential left and we still had great performances. So I think that was kind of a tone-setting performance for a lot of us, for sure. With the mood established that this season could be special, it was time for the women to show South Bend that this meet was no <laughs> laughing matter. So before Notre Dame, me and Van Hoy talked and it was just about making sure going out fast, replicating you know, how regionals and nationals was going to be because it always goes out fast. They're really big competitive meets and Notre Dame's a huge was a huge competitive meet for us before pre Nats. You know, we had all of these ranked teams, we had A and B, so even if like someone like me who was in the B race, it was still a very high competitive ranked, you know, meet. Just because these girls were all in the B race doesn't I mean we, we all could have been in the A race. It was just, you know, it's early in the season thing. People are experimenting. I didn't have as good of a start as I wanted to, so I didn't mind, you know, doing something different. And so me and Van Hoy talked the night before and it was just like, hey, like we need to work on racing. We need to work on getting out, being competitive. Everyone on this team is more than capable of doing something great and we just need to like do it. And that's kind of what happened the day of Notre Dame. I just felt good, I got out really well, and I had a really nice last 1K. So it was just a really well put out meet. After leaving it all out on the course, senior Maddie McHugh returned to Oxford to give back to a community she has come to know well over her years at the flagship university. Yeah, it's for reading with the Rebs. So us and other track and field athletes are here reading and giving back to the Oxford community. Hey, what's your guys' names? Hampton. Hampton. Hayden. So we went to Oxford Elementary School and we got to read, you know, the book of the teacher's choice in front of a bunch of kids and have them just interact with us, talk to us, ask us about sports, because all these kids are doing sports. Hannah, do you play soccer? I quit it. You quit? <laughs> oh, you used to play? I used to play. <laughs> Raise your hand if you play. Ballet. Karate. Karate. How many people, how many of you guys know people who run cross country? Raise your hand. It's a lot of people. Do any of you guys play sports? You know, they're all starting to do sports, so they really look up to anyone older who's still playing sports and want to like get involved and just know that it's still fun even when you're older. On Thanksgiving Day, Charlie Brown stood sadly at his mailbox, watching Snoopy walk off with a stack of mail, all for him. I love reading to the kids. I love kids in general. So they're just all really cute and full of energy. And I just love all the questions they ask. And um, right at the end of, you know, reading the book, and you know, they're like, we have to go. And it's so cute. All the kids are just running after you. are like, no, don't leave. We don't want to do school. So it was just nice, like, having all the hugs and just, like, all the interaction with just, you know, local Oxford kids. Uh, the course was a little bit rough, but it'll be good for tomorrow, so we're all excited, but we're not going to let the weather dampen our mood. <laughs> no, I didn't. Timor did. Yeah, he did. No, I eat pasta before every workout, and I eat pasta before every race. I feel like I'm the wrong person to ask that question to, because I don't think it really matters what you eat before a race, but that's just me. I measured them. 
Look. I, I got my ruler out. I got my protractor out. Hey, bro. I, hey, man. Uh, all you gotta know is that when I find dining, I'm gonna be paying the bill and I'm gonna eat however I want to eat. Those are the exact same thing. There's no way there's a difference. Are you trying to tell me? Are you kidding? That you're you're looking looking at yeah, you know what? You're right, okay? <laughs> Dinner was really good. Uh, I got some salmon. We were talking about, dude, I got salmon. Last time Parker got steak, and I'm like, gotta get the boys right. We got whatever we wanted. Now we're gonna go kill this race tomorrow, so. Sporting competitions, they have a starting and an ending point. Most are determined by a clock. When the clock reaches a certain point, the game is over. Not in your sport. You're in a sport in which the end of your effort and your contribution to this team is totally determined by you. Tomorrow in the Southeastern Conference Cross Country Championships, you will decide when you have contributed enough to the cause. You will decide tomorrow if you trust that your training is enough to run the pace that is needed to win another championship. Oh God, I love Shannon's speeches, it's just the best. Um, and he just like, just the way he talks and just like everything like that, and just like, and it gets the mood bumping. He just like slowly kind of like rolls into the stage and you're like, you know what's, good, what's about to happen. Tomorrow you're gonna be in that last lap and there will be people to pass. You will hear us in the distance as you come back around to the finish line. Oh yeah, you'll hear the crowds. You will recognize a tree or a bush or something that lets you know that you're almost home. You Ole Miss Rebels will know the barn is close. Look up, see the barn. You be like the smartest and the oldest horse of the herd. You dare anyone to get to your barn first. Rest easy tonight, guys. But when you get that good rest tonight, you wake up in the morning with a mission. Now go see the barn and let's bring home another championship. It is 25 with the wind chill right now. The course is wet, it is drying out. Today is a dry day, but there were over two inches of rain here in the last 48 hours. So the feet are gonna be cold. The course is muddy, so it's gonna be pretty tough, but luckily for our team, we work well in tough conditions, so. Cold, <laughs> very cold. Colder than I expected it to be, but I mean, it shouldn't be. Uh, an obstacle for us at all. And yeah, this meets real special just because you're just doing it all for your team. Um, so yeah, same kind of mindset. Something I think we pride ourselves as a program is never getting too hot, too cold. So it was just another race for us. Um, you know, definitely, you know, big results can come from it. But at the end of the day, uh, we prepared for this moment. So we knew we were ready to take on the challenge. The atmosphere like that is around you before the race. It just like makes you like so relaxed and so like you just believe in yourself and like you just know exactly what you've got to do, and you just you just know that all oh, that trophy is definitely coming back home. You yep. mentioned for the men, Ole Miss, they are the highest ranked team in the competition here, 11th in the country. They were picked by the league's coaches to win this event, seven first place votes. I would say that everyone was pretty confident. We know that like, we were the stronger team in the field, uh, and I think everyone was feeling good before the race. So Ole Miss right now with four runners in the top 10, five of them in the top 15, Parker Scott at 14. From the moment that the gun went off, we had one set goal. And to be honest, we had one set goal since we sat phone on this team. And it was just to be the best of the best to go out there and win championships and perform as the best that we could be. All the team standings through 3K, Ole Miss 61 points to Alabama's 82. And the, the strong team from Ole Miss is coming through. Coming down the home stretch, there would be no doubt in determining which team would be stepping into the winner's circle. Overall, the team competition looks to be well in the hands of Ole Miss. Yes! Ole Miss athletes, Ole Miss athletes, another Ole Miss athlete. Great, great performance for Coach Ryan Van Hoy as, and Mississippi Rebels will wind up easily winning the SEC team title championship on the men's side. So Ole Miss goes back to back. Woo! Number 
too. I mean, I've been waiting to, waiting to race all season, and I'm glad that I'm here. I'm glad I could be at the SEC Championship. I think we won the title, so super pumped. So, how many points was it? 30, 35? Yeah. 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 Five, I think. Yeah. I think it's actually like 90 or something. Yeah. 35. Yeah, last year was incredibly special. Um, I think what's really cool about this year, though, is it's definitely solidifying the validity of what we're doing as a program. You know, you do it one time and somebody can call it a fluke, but you do it twice in a row, it's like, well, it's pretty legit. <laughs> These guys mean business and uh, they're probably not going anywhere. Nice job. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Win? Okay. Yeah, we won. Having seen the guys win SECs again for the second year in a row really hyped up the girls team as well. It's like, yay, the guys did what they were supposed to do and they did great and they all looked good and finished well. So it's like just even more motivation for us to race as well. I feel like for the first time all season, we really just race as a team, and you could feel it in a race. Everyone was with someone. The women's team has absolutely improved significantly since I've been here my freshman year. It's, it's a whole other program. Helping to solidify its place among the premier programs in the SEC, the runners-up finish from the women would match their highest finish in program history. I'm so fortunate to be part of this program and be a part of you know someone who's made history and been able to go through the worst and even the best times of this women's Ole Miss cross country program. So proud of you. We did it. Coming off of last year, that was a step we needed, and it really sets us up for years to come where next year when we're trying to win, like we've been second. So now it's like on to the next step. That feeling when we're all together. That was oh, that's so good. good. I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> Again, repeating as champion as he was last year, uh, Coach uh, Ryan Van Hoy deserves a great deal of credit for building this very solid team. And, and he's now building a wonderful tradition down there at Ole Miss. They had strong teams over the last couple of years before this. Like last year was so hype because it was like the first time in history. And also this year our mindset was also like in NCAAs. And I think after the SEC championship we were thinking about, about NCAAs right away. I said it regionals and if we do this again then we should be able to go to nationals. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> now, just, now that we got to go back to Oxford, start training again and get ready for regionals and then to nationals right after that. So. Good morning. Uh, like Tyler just said, we are returning from Tallahassee uh, last Friday for the South Regional. Uh, that was the qualification meet for the NCAA championships, which are this Saturday in Terre Haute, Indiana. Um, and, you know, it's one of the best cross-country races in the world, probably outside of, um, you know, maybe the world championships in cross-country. It's very difficult to win that meet. The ladies that will be lining up, I think the top person we had last year was maybe 140th, so they're looking to be hopefully more towards the top 100 this year, which some people may say, well, only top 100, but uh, given the, the level and depth of this race, you know, finishing in the top 100 for anyone would be a good sign. Welcome to Terra The night before the season would reach its finish line, the nation's best distance runners would gather for a final feast and hand out some hardware. I was waiting to get in, we're about to get our picture at the NCAA symbol, and then go from there, but we're all hungry. It's exciting. I think we're in line to get our pictures done, and I think we're going to go inside and eat. Well, so far there's a lot of vegetables here, and personally, I'm not a big vegetable person, so... <laughs> Actually, I don't know most of this, so I got turkey, pasta, salad, and something right there that I don't know what it is, but hopefully it's going to taste good. But we'll try it out and see what's going to happen. Done with the banquet, got some food, heard some speakers, um, got some awards. After getting their fill at the buffet, associate head coach Ryan Van Hoy would be served with the honor of being named yet again the South Region Men's Coach of the Year. Yeah, let's go, man. 
So we just got finished with the banquet and now we're about to head back to the hotel and tomorrow we're going to pre meet and then it's time to race. We faced a lot of adversity this year, a lot of things that it'd be really easy to just kind of throw in the towel and be like, oh, we're not as good, like those goals still aren't achievable. But I think everyone did a really good job at knowing that regardless of what happened, someone was always there to step up. And that's kind of just what happened at Nationals. At the last stop in Indiana, the Rebels would reassert themselves as one of the most consistent programs in the nation, with both teams finishing among the top 25 teams. So I was here when the team, the first time the team made it to Nationals, and it has changed so much since then, and I think the things that now, that used to be goals for us are now expectations. So out of team camp, when all the girls sat down and talked together, our goal was to obviously make it back to Nationals again. We didn't want to lose that streak and that legacy that we started four years ago. Gradually, over the years that I've been here, the bar just gets being raised higher and higher and higher, and we no longer are just trying to make it to National Meets, like we're trying to be the best we've ever been at National Meets. And you can feel that energy when you're on the team. You know, just the whole overall like tribe aspect. Like we just have to all be there for each other and just help each other out when it's needed. Cause I mean, it's a hard sport, it's a long season, so you can't do it alone. Entering 2020 with two straight conference titles on the men's side and the best finishes in program history for the women, the future remains bright in Oxford. It was a good season for me and a good season for the team, but we still need to like, improve that a little bit more in order to like be able to like be in the top five at NCAA this year, and I think we can do it. It's an atmosphere where like excellence is expected, and it's just really cool to be a part of that. Very clearly, our team is showing incredible potential. You know, the day of nationals wasn't what we wanted, but I think going forward, that doesn't necessarily take away from the rest of the season that we had. But then, like whenever we had our happiness, we all were happy, and whenever we had our downs, we all were down, and. Um, it's like a really good thing to like share things like that with a team. For a runner, the only time you'd be able to experience such a thing, such a pure thing like that is the day in cross country.